Chapter 5 In January there came bitterly hard weather. The earth was like iron and nothing could be done in the fields. There were many meetings in the big barn. The pigs now planned all the work and decided all questions of farm policy. Their decisions were then put to a vote. The problem was that Snowball and Napoleon disagreed about everything. If one of them suggested sowing more barley, the other was certain to demand more oats. Both pigs had supporters and there were some violent debates between the rival factions. It's a vote for the life beautiful. It's a lie. I'll promise you a four-day week. Bosh! Perhaps a three-day week. Nonsense. At the meetings, Snowball often won over the majority by his brilliant speeches. Napoleon was better at quietly building support around the farm. He was especially successful with the sheep. The sheep often interrupted the meetings by bleating, four legs good, two legs bad. They did this at crucial moments in Snowball's speeches. Snowball had studied a book called Modern Farming and Stock Breeding, which he had found in the farmhouse. He talked learnedly about field drains and silage. He had many complicated plans for innovations and improvements. Napoleon produced no schemes of his own. This is all pie in the sky, he said quietly. None of it will work. The bitterest dispute was over the proposal for a windmill. Not far from the farm buildings, there was a small hill, the highest point on the farm. This is the ideal location to build a windmill, Snowball told the meeting. A uh, what, Comrade Snowball? A windmill could supply the farm with electrical power, said Snowball. It would light the stalls and warm them in winter. We could even have an electric milking machine. The animals listened in astonishment as Snowball spoke of other fantastic machines coming to their very old-fashioned farm. They will do our work for us, comrades, he explained. We will at last have time to graze in the fields or to improve our minds with reading and conversation. Napoleon grunted scornfully. The usual pie in the sky, he muttered. Snowball began working on plans for the windmill in an old shed. The mechanical details came mostly from a book called Electricity for Beginners. With a piece of chalk gripped between the knuckles of his trotter, he drew line after line. Gradually, the plans grew into a complicated mass of cranks and cogwheels, covering more than half the floor. The other animals came to look at Snowball's drawings at least once a day. Even the hens and ducks came, taking great care not to tread on the chalk marks. Only Napoleon declared himself against the windmill from the start. One day he arrived unexpectedly at the old shed to examine the plans. He walked heavily round the shed, looking closely at every drawing. Then suddenly he lifted his leg, urinated over the plans and walked out without uttering a word. The whole farm was deeply divided on the subject of the windmill. Even Snowball conceded that it would be very difficult to build. We will need to carry the stone from the quarry and then build it into walls. 
Then we must obtain dynamos and cables from somewhere. Pie in the sky, muttered Napoleon. I am confident we can do it, comrades, continued Snowball at the meeting, when he formally presented his proposal. The work can be completed in a year. After that, we will only need to work three days a week. Napoleon snorted in disgust. We need to increase food production, he said. If we waste time on this windmill nonsense, we'll all starve to death. The animals formed themselves into two factions under the slogans Three Day Week, Vote Snowball and more food now, vote Napoleon. Benjamin was the only animal who did not side with either faction. There won't be more food, he said, and a windmill won't mean less work. A meeting was called to decide whether or not to begin work on the windmill. Before the vote, Snowball stood up and gave a brilliant speech which was continually interrupted by bleating from the sheep. Then Napoleon stood up to reply. The windmill is nonsense, he said quietly. No comrade should vote for it. The big pig promptly sat down again, having spoken for barely 30 seconds. At this, Snowball sprang to his feet again. Comrades, he said, shouting down the sheep, who had begun bleating again. The windmill will give us heat and light. We will have control of our lives for the first time. Isn't that why we threw out Jones? Until now, the animals had been about equally divided in their sympathies. By the time Snowball had finished speaking, there was no doubt as to which way the vote would go. But just at this moment, Napoleon stood up. With a peculiar sidelong look at Snowball, he uttered a high-pitched whimper. At this, there was a terrible snarling sound outside. Nine enormous dogs, wearing brass-studded collars, came bounding into the barn. They dashed straight for Snowball. He sprang from his place, just in time to escape their snapping jaws. In a moment, he was out of the door, and they were after him. Too amazed and frightened to speak, all the animals crowded through the door to watch the chase. Snowball was racing across the long pasture that led to the road. The dogs were close on his heels. Suddenly, Snowball slipped. It seemed certain that they had him. Then he was up again. With a few inches to spare, he slipped through a hole in the hedge and escaped. Silent and terrified, the animals crept back into the barn. In a moment, the dogs came bounding back. Where did they come from? Someone whispered. They're the puppies Napoleon took away from their mothers. The puppies were now huge, fierce, wolf-like dogs. They kept close to Napoleon. They even wagged their tails for him, as the other dogs had once done for Mr Jones. Napoleon, with the dogs following him, now stood where Major had delivered his famous speech. This is the last Sunday morning meeting, he announced. They are a waste of time. In future, all the questions 
will be settled by a special committee of pigs, presided over by myself. We will meet in private and announce our decisions. There was silence in the barn. You will still assemble on Sunday mornings, he continued, but only to salute the flag, sing Beasts of England and receive your orders for the week. There will be no more debates. Napoleon sat down, surrounded by his dogs. The other animals were in a state of shock. Even Boxer was troubled. He set his ears back and shook his forelock several times. Most of the animals could not think of anything to say. Only the four young pigs in the front row uttered shrill squeals of disapproval. All four sprang to their feet and began speaking at once. Suddenly, the dogs sitting round Napoleon let out deep, menacing growls. The pigs fell silent and sat down again. Then the sheep broke out into a tremendous bleating of four legs good, two legs bad. A few weeks after Snowball's expulsion, Napoleon made a surprise announcement. We are building a windmill, comrades, he said. This extra task will mean very hard work and a reduction in rations. The animals were confused. Wasn't the windmill idea pie in the sky? That evening, Squealer explained the confusion to the other animals. Napoleon has never really been opposed to the windmill. Actually, he had the original idea. Snowball stole it from him. Then why... The three dogs, who happened to be with Squealer, growled threateningly. His explanation was accepted without further questions. <laughs>